Um, if you only watch one video this March Madness, it is certainly this one. We have pre-tournament Ken Palm stats, the definitive law in college basketball rankings. And we have used the pre-tournament stats to use as a guideline to predict who is going to win the March Madness tournament. Based on historical data, only a handful of teams this year can win the college basketball March Madness tournament. And we're going to go through each and every one and show you the selection criteria. Looking at four different metrics, we can narrow down what the possible teams are going to be to win this tournament. Sliwa. The first one we'll look at is adjustment margin ranking, which is really just the Ken Palm ranking itself, adjusted offensive ranking, adjusted defensive ranking, and strength of schedule. This is how the current landscape is as of Selection Sunday. And the first one, like we said, we talked about adjusted margin efficiency, which is how Ken Palm ranks 13. You can see the only two teams in the top uh, with a plus 30 are Connecticut Houston with a lot of great teams falling right behind them. Over the life of Ken Palm, the average March Madness champion has had a ranking of in the top three. That's also the medium. Obviously, the minimum ranking is one. The best team wins the March Madness tournament often, but no team has ever ranked outside of the top 25 pre-tournament Ken Palm stats and won the March Madness tournament. So all the teams you're looking at right here, you should not consider any other team outside of this list to win the tournament. I think that gets pretty obvious. What gets to be more nuanced is when you look at adjusted offensive efficiency, defense, and strength of schedule. For offense, um, the teams average right around the six or seven best offense in the country, which, uh, or sorry, with the best team, I've seen in some prior period being the best offensive team in the country. And then the worst offensive ranking any team has ever had pre-tournament is 37th. So we start to refine our list a little bit more between not just the top 25, but few teams here in this list that are 37th or better in terms of adjusted offense. And the same thing for defense, you know, pretty relevant statistic, right around the seven or eight mark um, for best in the country, but no team has ever won the tournament with a pre-tournament Ken Palm defensive ranking outside of the top 38. So now we start to narrow the band a little bit more. And the final metric we look at, Sliwa, is the adjusted strength of schedule. This one, a little bit less relevant. So you see the average is 13th. Um, but again, the median ranking is still around that seven, seventh best in the country, um, with teams winning it with the hardest strength of schedule. But no team has won it with the strength of schedule outside of the top 45. So once again, we narrow the criteria even more. And so for those keeping track at home, the worst a team has ever done in total efficiency is top 25. Um, they've never been outside of top 37 in offense, top 38 in defense, and top 45 in strength of schedule. So knowing that, let's take a look at the teams that qualify for this Ken Palm championship criteria. We did this video last year, Sliwa, it correctly uh, predicted the group of teams that uh, obviously correctly predicted UConn and also a lot of other teams that made some runs that other people weren't expecting. So the first batch, Sliwa, you know, we talked about this, just the adjusted efficiency. On average, it's in the top three, same with the median. All top three teams here um, qualify for this ranking here. Out of these three teams, though, who do you think is the most equipped to win this championship? Yeah, I mean, I've been saying it all season, and I think after watching the, the conference tournaments wrap up in Connecticut, being the only one of these three that was able to win the conference tournament as well as win the, the conference outright was Connecticut. So I think, yeah, I think they're the most equipped to make another run in March just because their overall team balance, both offensively and defensively. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at it there. The number one rated offense and then the 11th best defense. Yep, great defense. Like, you sum all those up together. I mean, yeah, they're, they're just the best team at the moment. Uh, they have rim protection. They have shooters. They have depth. Like, they have guys off the bench. Um, they got seniority. Like, you mentioned a lot of guys yeah. who got transfer. Yeah. Uh, get they some got guard scorers. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, upperclassmen as well it's in the backcourt who are going to be handing the ball down the stretch. So, yeah, I think Connecticut is the most well-equipped. We kind of saw it with Houston there. I mean, in looking at Houston-Purdue, these teams have only lost four games. But Houston, the offense went a little cold against Iowa State. And that's uh, something you mentioned. They didn't have – you've been saying all season long, they haven't had that, like, Marcus Sasser-type player that you can go to and say, go get me a bucket, like a TSJ on Illinois. Where yeah. Even if they're playing great defense, you got to create something for yourself. 
They're yeah, lacking. I mean, they don't get down often, but yeah, mm-hmm. when your tempo is the 348th in the country and you don't have, uh, yeah, like elite scores, it's really hard to come back into the game. And yeah, we let we saw them get, let it get away from them against Iowa State. I mean, that is a tough matchup for them, but um, yeah, I just feel like I wouldn't be surprised if we see that again in, mm-hmm. in March Madness. It's we, that's kind of what it's felt like when they have lost in March, you just see him be completely dominant. And then all of a sudden they lose by like 30 out of nowhere. Yeah, it's it's and it's, but that's kind of how it's gone for them. And yeah, it's because that offense isn't as reliable. They kind of really do play into like a, a play style of getting an early lead, forcing you into bad shots, like slowing mm-hmm. it down, grinding the game out. Um, just, yeah, like lowering the number of possessions, especially when you're playing from behind is really frustrating. So, so yeah, I mean, it's just they're still a good team, but yeah, I think Houston is almost the one I trust the least. Even though I would, I would probably, I know a lot of people are probably saying that about Purdue. I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they they still got away with a lot of calls in the Big Ten tournament, and a lot of people are talking about that online. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they they got a lot of bad ones they missed against the Badgers, but I mean, Purdue played bad that game. They they deserve to lose, but I still think this. Team has a lot more potential than Houston just because of the size of ED. And, like, if these guys are hitting shots, like, I think they could beat anyone. I think they could beat Connecticut. So, yeah, um, if, if their three point shooting is on and Zach ED does what he's supposed to, this team is uh, up there with UConn in terms of they can hang with anyone. Now, UConn certainly has got a higher ceiling than Purdue, but when Purdue's firing on all cylinders, they're a scary team. Yeah, yeah, and I would say Houston has a, a higher floor. Like, I don't think Houston's going to lose in the first round, whereas maybe Purdue could again. Not that I think it's going to happen, but no, um, but yeah, I think Purdue has a, a higher ceiling. Um, I just think, like, when their guys are on, they're, they are a better team. But, yeah, Houston, you're going to get it more consistently. It's just, yeah, I, their offense scares me, especially because in the tournament you got to beat a good team six games in a row you're probably going to run into somebody who's going to get really hot eventually. And if you can't score, like their offense is says is they're 17th, but I know a lot of that comes from how good their defense is. Mm-hmm. Like they're creating good possessions, like, uh, or like just a lot of fast breaks, steals, easy shots. But I just like when they have to create their own shot, it's not the most produced offense for the most part. Um, so yeah, I think that's why I'm a little bit lower on them. But you could you can make your case for Purdue it's, or you know Houston. they are I just yeah. yeah. But if you if you uh, you maybe pick one team though. I mean, it's been Connecticut for me pretty much the whole season. Mm-hmm. And like you, and like we said, these these three teams they all qualify, so they all could win according to the Kempom criteria. We actually skip Auburn and Iowa State, two of the top five teams that, if you prescribe to this logic. They cannot win the championship, and no team – how about this? They can win the championship, but no team like Auburn or Iron State has ever won the championship in a Ken Palm era. Um, for Auburn, they don't qualify with their um, strength of schedule, although, you know, their conference win was impressive. Yeah, they didn't face the best teams in that conference with how things shook out. Shook out, And, you know, their strength of schedule was not benefit from that. And the Iowa State there, um, their offense, it, while – Played well against Houston, but historically this season, um, they didn't make it there. So we skipped those two teams. Arizona matches this criteria with a pretty solid um, balance of offense and defense there in a good strength of schedule, as well as Tennessee, um, whose offense has actually been slipping a little bit in the Kent Palm rankings, but that defense and strength of schedule certainly speak for themselves. Um, any notes on either or both Arizona and Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, I mean this one – it's it's no surprise. I mean, this is we're going off of our criteria here, but yeah, if we had said Auburn and Iowa State according to our criteria weren't teams that could win, and Arizona and Tennessee, after seeing both of these lose, like in that first game of the conference tournament, yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah, that I, it's hard for me to trust either of them. I mean, Tennessee I've liked a lot. I just kind of endorsed them a week or two ago, but mm-hmm. they've lost. They've been. 10 point favorites in their last two games and they've lost pretty badly in both of them. Um, that's just the offense is kind of worse than I thought it, it could be. I mean, I know connects a really good player, but when he's the only one that could score, um, they, it is pretty one dimensional and that's kind of what we're seeing. I mean, the other guys aren't really great shooters. So I think teams are kind of keying in on connect and figuring out how to slow them down. Mm-hmm. I still think Arizona actually though can make a run. I'm not as, 
I know I'm like a little bit afraid of them being in the Pac-12 and everything, but I don't like <clears throat> they lost to Oregon. Oregon just ran and made, won the whole tournament. I think Arizona could still make a pretty deep run in March, and maybe maybe now you get a good buy low on them because people are like, oh, they I lost so. first round, like not don't want to take them. Tennessee scares me more because they've just been getting killed the last two games and games that they were supposed to win. Whereas Arizona, they f- I feel like they just got caught a little back footed on that Oregon game. Yeah, sometimes yeah, you I just, I just the hot they're both, Yeah, they're just more dimensional. Um, like Caleb Love, who won Pac-12 Player of the Year. They got Jaden Bradley, he's the transfer from Bama, who's coming off the bench for them. Like Kylan Bosl, like they got a lot of scorers or guys who can get you a bucket, and honestly, maybe even a little bit more size with Umar Ballo. So yeah. I think Arizona can make a real run. Just I, I see them as more of a complete team than than Tennessee, at least for sure. No, I'm with you there. We skip Duke, and I'll show you all the final teams. So we talked about five of them. North Carolina's in. Creighton and Marquette round out this group of teams that, according to historical trends and just the history of Ken Palm and the NCAA tournament, these are the teams that can win. Now, if any of these other teams on this list win – it would be record breaking and it would be unprecedented. So that's the list here. Now we skip Duke, Illinois. Everyone knows about their bad defense, but he gets teams like North Carolina, um, Crane and Marquette um, here. So a lot of Big East representation. We're only talking about eight teams, three of them being from the Big East. Um, that certainly speaks to why these teams have a slightly higher um, strength of schedule. But only eight possible teams here. What we're looking at last year, we said seven teams. One of those was UConn at one. This year, we're saying eight teams. Um, again, UConn being one of them, but a new cast of characters this year. Of, of the three schools that we just popped up here, UNC, Creighton, and Marquette, which one do you like the most? And I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't look good last night, but I would still have to go with North Carolina. Um, they have the best defense here. And, I mean, if you watch the game, they just they – they had no answer for DJ Burns, the 280-pound mm-hmm. post on NC <laughs> State. He just backed down every single play and either had a layup. Like, they didn't bring any help over. Uh, it was kind of wild watching him take over. It just felt like – it was just another one of those games where like, NC State was – like, after the run they had been on, they were going to, like, finish out and win the tournament. So, I'm not, like – Super down. North Carolina looked really bad down the stretch, but yeah, I just I don't I don't know. I don't think of them crazy different after that game. I think they just didn't play super well in the, the championship game. But yeah, I mean, I like to rely on that team with you got a couple upperclassmen, um, one being the point guard, which is one of the most important positions, and then the other one with Baycott, the like all time leading rebounder in the program, mm-hmm. and the top ten defense. Like, I mean, they just have a lot of things that you're kind of looking for in a team to make a run. Uh, yeah, I just think that might be another one that maybe people are for some reason scared about after the loss. But, I mean, most of these teams did lose too. Like Duke lost yeah. early in the tournament. Uh, I'm just always a little bit down on Marquette. I think, like, I just have never been fully sold on them. I mean, and then with them too, you need to figure out if Colex going to end up playing. I feel like I don't know how he won't. Uh, but he missed the whole Big East tournament. And, I mean, they still made the semis, but if he doesn't play in March, like, they could maybe even lose in the first round or something like that. Not only if he doesn't play, if he does play, but he's not at 100% either. And that's a big thing, too. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, I I think the rest of their team stepped up pretty big, um, and it, like, almost helped their rating out because they, they still made the championship game without him. But, yeah, I just don't think their ceiling is quite there without him. Creighton was frustrating. I mean, a lot, it's tough because between like Creighton, uh, Arizona, Tennessee, these are teams that I thought were like like real contenders. Um, thought we we're going to play pretty well in their conference tournament, and they all lost in the first game. So I saw another stat where the teams that lost their first conference game have not won the the national title. Really? Which which is also, I mean, something that could easily change. But big deal. But yeah, like uh, like. Creighton's another one that I thought who could be a sneaky, like, especially if you're looking for, like, a 3-4 seed that, like, I think they're probably the strongest team that's this far down on the list as far as, like, what you're mm-hmm. looking for, like, rim protector, a lot of scores, um, like, yeah, balance offense and defensively, tough schedule. Like, they have everything. Um, but, yeah, they just 
it, they they're inconsistent. They don't like come to play enough. But like when you're just looking at the teams on the paper, I do think they're like a lot better than Marquette, for example. For like two teams that you would say are basically even. Mm-hmm. Um, that's... yeah, that's just kind of how I view it. But yeah, it's it's gonna be an interesting March for sure. Like, I mean, if these are the the eight teams we got. Yeah. And, you know, just because you're not on that list doesn't mean you can't make it to the championship, can't make a great run in March. You know, here are some teams that are just outside that criteria that certainly um, I have no doubt can make runs this March, but just they don't fit in that criteria. And that's Auburn and Iowa State, to no surprise for a lot of people. They just missed out. You know, Duke, I have a feeling a lot of people are pretty high on them. And there, I'm sure, Sliwa, there are people watching this video saying Duke's had a great offense and a great defense. I'm not going to not pick them just because they're strength of schedule. But – Right. I, I think, you know, I'm going to stick with the Ken Palm history. And, you know, we talk about it every video. Like Teams that are battle tested do better in March. Now, Duke had a pretty strong, you know, in-conference schedule. Obviously, the ACC is really good, but it certainly has to be their con- out-of-conference schedule that's plaguing them um, to give them 75th um, hardest strength of schedule there. So I still I think a lot of people are going to try to disregard the strength of schedule. I do think it's important. And now if they were at 46 to 50, that'd be a different story. But the fact that it's 75th, um, it's a little bit farther than I'd like. So here's some other teams that I think are just missing out. The closest one being Wisconsin um, with the 39th best defense in the GDP top 38. You know, that's definitely splitting hairs, but that's the criteria. And, and, you know, this is the worst case scenario. Like we said, the average defensive ranking for these teams is seven. So 39 is a far way away. It's just close to being at the absolute cutoff here. But I would not be surprised to see any of these teams make a, a run. You know, San Diego State obviously went really far into the finals last year. Um, Kansas, we talked about how their offense has been hurting them a lot. If they can get hot offensively or things start to click, then they're a dangerous team with how good that defense is too. Uh, BYU, we talked about how – Hyper frequency, they shoot the three and how that's helped them this year. And then Wisconsin, you just saw them beat the number one seed, Purdue, and give Illinois a pretty strong run for their money in that Big Ten championship game. You know, all these teams are contenders. We're just saying, I would I would advise to not pick these teams in your bracket to win it all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would, yeah. I mean, you see the flaws with a lot of these teams, like Auburn and Iowa State. Like, I mean, Auburn looked pretty unreal in that SEC tournament run. Mm-hmm. So it's tough to like go against them, but I mean you've seen them or we've seen them get cold at times throughout the season. Um, that's another team that like if the shots aren't falling, kind of like Houston, and I mean that could really be the case for anyone. But like I d- I do question if they have as reliable scores, even though they do have the tenth rated offense. Like they play fast, they play tough defense and like platoon style as we've talked about. Mm-hmm. But I, Iowa State, too, with the number one overall defense passing up Houston's crazy. Yep. Like, that's just another brutally, like, strong defense. So, I mean, it's tough to leave some of these teams out. But, yeah, like, another one, like, they might get cold. Yep. Duke, yep. I just feel like, doesn't have the toughness <laughs> to, like, win that many games Fair. in a row, to be honest. And it might frustrate some people online. But, yeah, I just <laughs> yeah, I don't sure think they got it. Uh but yeah, BYU, Wisconsin, two teams. Yeah, I feel like they're pretty similar. Like, they're good. They're close. They're just, yeah, they haven't figured it out on defense. Like, mm-hmm. like they just get cold and end up losing the games. Yeah, but certainly doesn't mean, you know, these teams won't make it to, like, an Elite Eight setting or, or something like that. I would expect, you know, statistically, one of these teams probably won't make it past the first weekend, but they're certainly all good enough to do so. So, something to keep an eye on. But um, going back just before we – End off here. These are the teams, though, that I'm prescribing saying pick one of these teams in your bracket. If you want to zig when Irish are zagging, don't take Connecticut. Don't take the probably one seed Houston or Purdue. Look at Arizona, probably um, Arizona, North Carolina, like Tennessee. If you're looking for a longer shot with Creighton or Marquette, too. But these are the teams that have one of them winning. And if you don't have them, one of these teams winning, make them go far in your bracket. And I think that's going to help a lot of people out here. Yeah, no, no, I absolutely agree. Yeah, these are, these are the most balanced teams. Probably getting your best shot to go far in the tournament, at least. Yeah. Not just banking on a team to get hot. It has to. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up here. We're going to have a lot of different bracketology, round-by-round round analysis and stats coming out um, today and later this week. So keep an eye 
on all the rest of our videos, we're going to help you make the perfect bracket or as close as you can to doing so and then winning your league. So let's have a fun March and let's keep it rolling.